Number 10, Boss Madam Hydra. I mostly wanted to include this alternate version of Madam Hydra because of her cool look in the comics. Though there is something problematic about this version of her, but we'll touch on that later. This version of Madam Hydra is married to Modok, doesn't like wearing underwear, has a fork-like snake tongue, and wears a dress instead of her standard combat suit. She may have a hotter look, which is why I included her, but she is also kind of problematic. Granted, she is also a villain. As Madam Hydra, she sexually abuses her employees, including the main character from the comic that she appears in, Hank Johnson. Of course, this makes her a pretty terrible person, but she is Madame Hydra, and she is supposed to be a villain in the story even to Hank, who works for Hydra as an agent. So they obviously had to make her story-wise pretty terrible. Anyways, I just wanted to acknowledge that and say that it is her look that got her on the list rather than her treatment of her staff. Number 9. DC Legends Killer Frost This version of Killer Frost comes to us from the video game DC Legends. She follows a similar origins to her main continuity counterpart, but has a different look. She still wears all black, but instead wears a corseted top and shorts, or a sleeveless romper, if they're connected. She has fur on her arm gauntlets and her boots, and her boots have a dramatic heel, and she wears garters armed with ice shards. Her earrings also appear to be made of ice. Her legendary form in the game is more of a nod to her comic book appearance, but even this version is a fire or ice, I guess. This version of Caitlyn Snow wears a full-length bodysuit covered in ice spikes with cutouts for her fingers, shoulders, and a small chest cutout. Here her hair appears shorter and is styled upward, causing it to also resemble an ice spike. Number 8. Moonstone This version of Carla Sofin comes to us from the Earth 7642, the crossovers. This version of Moonstone was originally a criminal-turned-government-approved leader of the Thunderbolts. She still has her rivalry with Miss Marvel, but she also has a cool futuristic looking costume, kind of looks like liquid metal, and has a chest cutout that also shows off her cleavage and just the top of Moonstone's abdomen. Abs. Also, shiny things are so sexy. I love some shiny things. Guess I'm like Kaylee and Firefly. Number seven, Apocalypse. I mean, Apocalypse, when it comes to X-Men villains, is known for being one of the most unstoppable. And just for that reason, we should bow down and worship the hotness of A. Ah, or whoever we're supposed to say his new Krakoan name. I, I don't speak Krakoan, but I I'm trying. I'm really trying, Apocalypse. Apocalypse is a hottie because of how capable and ruthless he is. He is inevitable, he is often undefeatable, and he is all-powerful. Apocalypse also generally is always operating from the bigger picture perspective. He has big plans, and who doesn't like someone who has that level of ambition? We all would want to rule as the queen by his side, no? But it turns Turns out that that seat is already taken, sadly. But that's okay, Genesis is also another hottie. <laughs> Another villain hottie. Number six, Kandra. Like many villains who have come before and after her, I think a big part of Kandra's appeal is power. Why are we attracted to power? Well, because I think along with power comes a certain kind or level of confidence. At least it appears people who have power are generally confident, whether or not they feel that way. Something about that confidence, power, and dominant energy makes us feel safe, even when we actually might be in peril, because these are villains who might be threatened us. And generally, if you wind up tangoing with Kandra, you'll likely end up in peril at some point. At least that is what happened with Gambit in his miniseries. He and Kandra used to kind of be an item, but that didn't mean much when she felt he had betrayed her and when Gambit found out what Kandra was really up to and how she'd actually been pitting the Thieves Guild and Assassin's Guild of New Orleans against each other for years, basically creating their feud. Number 5. Shinobi Shaw Shinobi Shaw is the son of Sebastian Shaw. Well, Sebastian Shaw I don't think will ever make make my cut for hottest X-Men villains. Sorry, Sebastian. Shinobi is a cutie that I think deserves a spot. Shinobi Shaw didn't really start out as a villain, but seemed to become obsessed with inheriting all his father's power. He believed at one point to have killed Sebastian, and took his seat at the Hellfire Club and all of his connections for himself. During this time, he attempted to recruit Angel and Psylocke as members of the Hellfire Club's inner circle, but he failed. Later on, it was revealed Sebastian Shaw lived, and he returned to kill Shinobi, who was then resurrected, died again taking his own life, and later was resurrected on Krakoa once more. And I think that's I think that's it. He isn't really a villain in the current continuity, but that doesn't mean that he can't end up as one again. Although I do like him just being a nice guy. That's also good too. I wish he could just be a nice guy and be a villain. 
Oh wait, I feel like you can do that. You can do both. Number four, Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix is one of the baddest of the bad, but hey, I love her, you love her, and you know, we can't help it because although she can destroy entire planets, she is still ultimately a hottie. And not only that, she represents someone who is identified as being inherently good turning bad, which for some reason makes her more attractive when it comes to her evilness. The Dark Phoenix was initially explained as being Jean Grey, who had bonded with the Phoenix Force, became the the Phoenix and then became corrupted and turned dark. In reality, it was a little more complicated than that. It wasn't really Jean and it was like the Phoenix made a copy of her, kind of was her. But the major appeal here, let's just ignore all that confusing continuity, does have to do with the basic narrative. Somebody good turning bad. The idea of someone becoming so powerful that they give into that power and kind of become corrupted by it. It's kind of weirdly sexy. I guess because power is kind of sexy. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Number three, 2015 Secret Wars Selene. In the reality of the 2015 Secret Wars, Earth 19947, Selene is allied once more with Sebastian Shaw and is also part of God Emperor Doom's court. She only appears briefly in issue two of Secret Wars, but I love her look here. Also, the artwork, which is Asad Rabish, the same artist as the one for the Loki series where the alternate Hela I mentioned appears. It is very classic Selene, her appearance. Here. Her wardrobe here is very classic Celine, much like Madeline Pryor's is also, and a look we haven't really seen Celine return to recently. This look is her in a corseted top with a black headband and cape. Black queen, so of course all black everything. One can assume she also might be wearing thigh-high black lace-up boots, and she also wears long black gloves and a black thong. Celine is the epitome of power and sexiness. I also just love her in a cape. I love everyone in a cape. A cape and thigh high boots for everybody. Number two. Pamela Isley. This version of Pamela comes to us from DC Bombshells. I know we have already talked about an alternate version of this villain, but this one is also so stunning, and I'm such a huge Poison Ivy fan, who isn't, that I had to also include her. Poison Ivy in the DC Bombshells universe was a smuggler working with the alternate version of Catwoman. Eventually, the Nazis took over her home city of Calais in France. Unhappy about then being forced to work for the Nazis instead, she ended up brewing and wearing a potent perfume, whose scent was so strong that it made the Nazis pass out, allowing her to kill them and get revenge and escape. However, the perfume also turned her skin green, just how she got her classic iconic look in this alternate world. Number one, DCEU Harley Quinn. Now, I couldn't do a list about hot female supervillains without talking about the brilliant and stunning talent that is Margot Robbie. Robbie portrays Harley Quinn in the DCEU films, and despite Suicide Squad not being as big of a success as the studio had hoped, her performance performance of Harley still managed to wow audiences. Margot Robbie just seems to really enjoy playing the character, and also seems to have a brilliant understanding of just what craziness makes Harley tick. Whether she's rocking her daddy's little monster shirt and sequin shorts and Suicide Squad, or kicking butt in various jaw-dropping, bright and bold outfits in Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, she is magic to watch on the screen. Nothing like someone as badass as Margot Robbie playing someone as badass as Harley Quinn. It's just a match made in hotness heaven. Number 10, Jared Leto. While Jared Leto's version of the Joker in Suicide Squad may not have been the most well received, the fact remains that Jared Leto is widely regarded to be a pretty attractive man. His version of the Joker came off as being a very manic millennial gangster and was for most a little uh, too manic. But Leto's Joker should get some bonus points for giving us a very tattooed up version of this villain. At the very least, to most, tattoos are considered pretty sexy. And fans of Jared Leto likely still can't can't see him as anything but the lovable, somewhat of a jerk, illiterate teen heartthrob that was Jordan Catalano. Jordan Catalano, although pretty terrible, was pretty babely. Number 9, Jokester. This version of Joker comes to us from Earth 3. He is actually a good guy, which is part of what adds to his appeal. This version of the Joker was known by the name Jackie. He was an underdog and struggling comedian who stood up to the corrupt vigilante Owlman. Taking a stand against Owlman, who Jackie actually knew to be a murderer, he made him the target of the jokes in his comedy act. The police and people of Gotham saw Jackie as a sort of hero for standing up to Owlman, but his heroism came at a cost. Owlman got revenge by giving Jackie a Glasgow smile and killing his manager Harley Quinn. This drove Jackie insane, making him only have eyes for destroying Owlman and his sidekick Talon. Number 8. 
DC Bombshells. In the world of DC Bombshells, Joker is often referred to by Harley as Mr. J. Mr. J was Harley's ex-lover who Harley left after she felt he was changing for the worse due to alcoholism and an obsession with potions. For this, however, the two were very happy together, surviving the Great Depression through becoming thieves. Sort of a Bonnie and Clyde type vibe. They took from the rich and even sometimes helped out others with the wealth that they stole. And it's for this less harmful and more originally lovable side of this alternate that we can consider him somewhat hot. Number 7. Healing Witch Poison Ivy In the comic Batman slash Demon a Tragedy, Poison Ivy appears as a healer who aims to heal Bruce of his allergy to moonlight. She senses a dark presence within him and gives him an herbal treatment to help weaken the evil entity residing within him. This version of Ivy is like a mix of a naturopath meets a witch, appearing with voluminous and disheveled fiery locks covered in grass and flowers, wearing a small leafy bustier and a grass skirt. I also just love her name. They're painted red and super pointy. She has big green eyes, a dramatic pouty lip, and a tiny little button nose. Sadly, this alternate version of Ivy is killed by Etrigan, who ends up being revealed as the bat demon who has been possessing Bruce. Number 6. Assassin Wear Catwoman this version of Catwoman it comes to us from a medieval sort of fantasy world. In fact, the same world as the previous Poison Ivy I was just talking about. She is an assassin paid in gold by this world's killer croc to take out their reality's Batman. This version of Catwoman wears more armor on her arms than her body, and prefers to run around the city of Gotham with her mane of dark hair loose and flowing, and a very torn up version of her full body latex catsuit. Her armor gauntlets have claws and spikes attached, matching her buckled and spike covered pointed boots. Her mask also sports realistic and dramatic cat-like ears. In fact, this version of Catwoman also appears to be part werecat possibly, as she can also be seen with her head drawn back face up as she howls at the moon above. Number 5. Hela, Goddess of Death I know we normally call Hela the Goddess of Death, that is one of her titles in the main continuity of Earth 616, but this alternate of her from Earth 94001 is also known as the Goddess of Death. She comes to us from a reality where Loki ends up as the ruler of Asgard, but that's not the only difference in this reality. Hela also sports a different look. As opposed to her full length of bodysuit, she wears a sleeveless bodysuit more akin to a play suit or like a swimming suit. She also wears a mask that covers her hair and has a dramatic high-necked cape with thorns emerging from the back of it. Also, thigh-high boots, my fave. This version of Hela is also quite curvy and intimidating looking in comparison to Loki. She just looks like a big, powerful, and strong goddess here, and I am loving it. Actually, I love a lot of the ways the women are drawn in this comic. Number four, Harleen. This version of Harley comes to us from the DC Black Label book, Harleen, with stunning artwork by Steven Sedgwick. It's easy to see what makes this version of Harley so attractive. The art is a huge part of her appeal here, but this is also a steamy exploration of Harley's origin story, how she went from studying the Joker to falling for him as she herself was lost to madness. It's like a weird, sexy story about a psychotic break, which is just all very Harley, to be honest. DC Black Label is also meant to be a more mature label for DC, which allows it to push the envelope when it comes to its series subject matter. Number three, Jokers. On Earth 9, the Joker persona was actually shared by three women. Mary Marvel, Lori Lamaris, and Christy Xanadu, Earth 9's Madam Xanadu. On this Earth, the Jokers were an anarchistic vigilante group operating under one name and identity, the Joker. They were part of a group who tried to take down Superman after he had become the most powerful superhero on Earth and had outlawed all other vigilantes. Unfortunately, Superman caught Mary Marvel and managed to use her mind to discover the other identities of the Joker. All three of these ladies are attractive, powerful women, and and the fact that their Joker was an anarchistic hero just adds to their appeal. Earth-9 is the alternate universe belonging to the DC imprint Tangent Comics. Number 2. Bianca Steeplechase This version of the Joker comes to us from the Thrill Killer series, the alternate Earth-37. In this reality, Joker is a woman and a criminal known as Bianca Steeplechase. While still being quite evil, this version of the Joker seems to be much kinder to her Harley Quinn, has striking green eyes that are much more alluring than the main continuity's green paper and loves to wear low-cut or dramatically unbuttoned shirts. Once you see this version of the Joker, you'll never look at the main continuity one the same way again. Number 1. Gotham 
In Gotham, we have two Jokers, twin brothers known as Jeremiah and Jerome Velasca. Originally, it seemed that the deranged and evil brother Jerome was set up to become the Joker in the show. Jeremiah had escaped his brother and run off to the circus, changing his name to hide from him. He claimed that Jeremiah had tortured and tormented him when they were both children. But in the end, it was revealed that this um, may have been less than true. After his brother's death, Jeremiah was exposed to laughing venom that unleashed his own inner madness and allowed him to begin his own transformation into the Joker. Since then, Jeremiah had has been exposed to that famous vat of Ace Chemicals, which left him severely disfigured and scarred. But prior to this change in his appearance, both he and his identical brother were fairly handsome and originally appeared to be the most attractive live action depiction of the Joker we've seen yet. Both characters are of course played by the same actor on Gotham, the talented Cameron Monaghan. Number 10, Danger. I don't know if it's weird that I find Danger attractive, but as I said on part one of this list, cyborgs, robots, androids, and synthesoids all deserve love too, in my opinion. Danger as a sentient AI may be more than most after how she was treated by Professor X, who basically ignored her sentience so that he could keep using her as a training room for his X-Men. Not cool, Charles. Not cool. Sure, she rose up and attempted to destroy the X-Men in revenge and was pretty successful at battling them, at least at first, but I also can't help but feel that she was kind of justified in her villainy, especially when it came to her attempts to do harm to the professor, who also was exiled at the time basically because of all the things that he'd done that had come to light. Number 9, Spiral. Spiral is awesome and hot because, well, She's a badass. She was originally a stunt woman known as Ricochet Rita, who met Longshot and got swept up in a temporal paradox, which was basically what led her to becoming her future self, the same future self who would end up attacking her. Temporal paradox. Her story is also actually kind of sad, considering that her love for Longshot was what ended up getting her imprisoned, and then Longshot's mind was also wiped entirely of her. That's pretty sad. Harsh. Spiral ended up being heavily mentally and physically modified and turned into one of Mojo's loyal goons. Poor Rita. Spiral also just has a lot going on, and there is a lot about her that one could love. She's a very experienced and skilled fighter, she's jacked and has multiple arms, so she's really jacked, and she can cast spells via specific movements. However, she typically needs all of her arms to be free in order to be fully able to cast spells, as generally their motion and through dance is how she's able to do so. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more hot X-Men villains, <gasps> so many, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. All the hot X-Men villains. Number 8, Azazel. Azazel is Nightcrawler's demon mutant daddy, who is considered hot enough by Mystique for her to sleep with, have the child of, and even potentially fall in love with. Romance. Yeah, that's right, in case you didn't know or you forgot, Mystique is also Nightcrawler's birth mom. Azazel claimed to be one of the oldest mutants in existence, and is also at times claimed to be Satan, or at least someone who was once in running to become Satan. He and his kind mutant demons known as the Neofem actually found themselves trapped in the Brimstone Dimension, the dimension that Kurt Wagner travels through when teleporting with a bamf. Azazel making babies like Kurt was actually all part of a long con plan to help him escape the brimstone dimension, as he planned to use his children from Earth to build a sort of gateway out of there. Sort of Earth Kid Bridge, I guess. It's kind of what he's trying to do. Through sacrificing them. It really depends on what you're into, I suppose, but I know a lot of people find the devil and just demons in general pretty hot, both literally and also, literally, I guess. Would we consider that even metaphorically? Not really. They're hot and they're hot. Number seven, Heath Ledger. Heath's take on the Joker was not only one of the best cinematic interpretations, but was also one of the hottest. While the brilliant makeup Ledger wore made him look more rough, whose look was created by the makeup artist genius that is John Caglione Jr., the fact remains that under the makeup was Heath Ledger's gorgeous face. But Ledger's reputation as a charming, gorgeous man aside, there was something super sexy about the motives of this version of the Joker, the character itself. Joker saw himself as less of a villain and more of an agent of chaos. And while as human beings we generally prefer for our surroundings to be stable, reliable, and somewhat static, it is for that same reason that the idea of anarchy and chaos often draws us in. There was something beautiful, if not deranged, about the way Ledger and Nolan's Joker perceived the world and his role in it. Number 6. All-Star Joker the Joker of Earth-31 from All-Star Batman and Robin and The Dark Knight Returns is just 
super jacked. What's even crazier is later on in his story when we see him, this version of the Joker is meant to be in his 50s, and yet he still looks super ripped. This version of the Joker also has a giant dragon tattoo on his back that extends onto his bicep. What can I say? I'm a sucker for some nice tattoos. And while this Joker is still positively insane, although he might have you believe otherwise, and evil, he still somehow manages to appear to be in great shape physically. Number 5. White Knight in the White Knight reality, it ends up being Joker who becomes the hero. After being cured of his insanity, he decides Batman has gone too far, is also deranged, and needs to be stopped. This version of the Joker immediately returns to his Harley, to make up for years of abuse, and finally be the stand-up guy that she deserved the whole time, only to find out she isn't even really Harley Quinn, but an imposter. His abuse had driven the real Harley Quinn away years ago, but the real Harley does return to him, and together the two try to fix their relationship, transforming it into a healthier one. Harley agrees to help Jack Napier, the former Joker, and Jack resists his darker thoughts, keeping them at bay with medication and Harley's support. There is something both sweet and endearing about seeing this journey where Jack works to get better and actually become a hero of sorts that draws you in. Number 4. Harleen I can't say this enough. If you have not read this book, you really need to read it. It really is a great dive into how Harley got pulled in by the dark and twisted villain that is the Joker, by this obsession with fixing him and then just kind of accepting him for the truly broken person and vile criminal that he is. The attraction to Joker in this book is how he's drawn. He's definitely more handsome than usual, but psychologically, it's all about that draw to the dark, broken side of people and of ourselves. And the rush of adrenaline we feel both when we are falling in love, but also when we are in danger, and how being addicted to that rush can actually blur the lines between those two very different experiences. The Joker is still evil here, he's still a bad guy, but you can see why Dr. Harleen Quinzel falls for him. It's still very alarming, but it's also kind of hot. Number 3. Magneto Magneto is obviously one of the hottest guys around in comics. The weirdest thing is, I'm not really sure what it is about him that makes him so attractive to so many of us. I mean, I guess Eric Lencher, like so many comic book characters, is very built, so physically there's that. If that's of course what you're into, like I think so many people are. For me, I think the charm of Magneto is just in his seriousness. I would just want to see him smile because he is typically such a strict, serious, and imposing figure. And then I suppose there is also a sense of fairness, and even a kindness to him that I expect many find appealing. Also, he's got great hair. Number 2. Revenant Storm Revenant Storm was not in fact the real Storm, which is why she ranks only second on this list. However, she is a version of Storm, albeit one that is evil and that exists on the astral plane. We first met Revenant Storm in 2013's Uncanny X-Force issue number 10. Here we also learn that these revenants that we meet, who appear to be copies of mutant heroes, actually exist for every sapient being on planet Earth. Basically, it turns out that revenants are like a form of mum dry, which are beings who represent the anti-self that must be defeated prior to a person's birth, according to the Shi'ar and their mythos. Why is Revenant Storm so hot? Well, because she's an evil version of freaking Aurora Monroe. Also that outfit though. Basically anytime Storm is evil, or anytime Storm isn't evil, I think Storm is hot. <laughs> That's how it goes. Next time we will have Vampire Storm, Blood Storm. Number 1. Emma Frost Emma is admittedly more of a hero now, but for a while, before she turned to the side of good and joined the X-Men, she was known as an ally and member of the Hellfire Club, and an X-Men villain. Remember when she swapped bodies with Storm? Yeah, not cool Emma. And the feud of those two has kind of carried on in the comics, even today. Although in Krakoa, both women are of course trying to move forward, and even have worked together as members and allies of the Marauders. Emma Frost is sexy, I think, because of how confident she is. At least, that's what's really made me come around to falling in love with her. She is smart, confident, and really doesn't worry too much about what others think of her. Also, all those Hellfire Gala outfits. Like, damn! Emma was the best dressed at the Hellfire Gala. If you don't agree with me, we're gonna have to fight. <laughs>